Crystal Lake went through a period of growth here back at the right about the 1990s and we saw what was coming at us. Um, we were able to build, I think it was Indian Prairie in 1991, and that temporarily eased some of that overcrowding and that growth we were experiencing in the primary and the, and the secondary level in elementary schools. But they still needed more room. Then we started our mobile classroom. I think every, dis every school in our district had at least one mobile classroom on it. Uh, we had four mobile classrooms outside of Lundahl. Um, and in that process, we were basically trying to buy time and space to accommodate this large group of children that kept growing at the elementary level and kept moving towards the middle school level. And we started moving sixth grade into the middle school. Uh, and then after all the sixth graders were in the middle school, we basically figured out that we were pretty much out of options. Um, the growth didn't stop. We knew that it wasn't going to stop. And so we started to try to plan long term. I mean, one thing that we've really been blessed with in our community is our school boards have always been pretty far seeing and out there trying to not just solve the problems of the day, but to look at what might be coming our way. And we've been blessed with some great leaders. Um, I can think of three or four of our board presidents and local community leaders that um, come to mind. Carl Wade was a great guy. Carl Wade was a local businessman, actually had his roots in education. He started off as a teacher and then ended up being an owner of two or three businesses in downtown Crystal Lake. Ended up on the school board, great family, um, ended up a community leader. Uh, and he and that, those visionaries like him were able to say, we have to get a handle on this. So we went out and looked at all sorts of options. What can you do? Because it was quite apparent that after one or two referendums that the people in Crystal Lake had just paid for a new elementary building and they weren't quite ready to pay for a new middle school building that we needed. So we went out and went to places like St. Charles, Missouri and they had year-round school and they would use a building for a whole year and basically run students in in shifts during that school year. And that way they could double use classrooms. And that became kind of the key that we were looking at. We looked at two or three options and what finally came about, and it was a tremendously uh, hard decision for the school board to make was they decided that they would reduce the amount of time in the school day for seventh and eighth graders. Basically, they would take the specials, the encore subjects, the um, subjects like music and art and, and, and things like that, and they would pare those down and still keep your traditional academic time, one special, your mandatory physical education, and then send the students home. No lunch, no study hall, no extra specials. We came up with a schedule. The eighth graders would arrive in the building at 6.30. Eighth graders would come into the building, the buses would run, eighth graders would take their places in the classroom and start their school day. Then at our normal starting time, the sixth graders would come into the building and they would go to their classrooms and they would stay in those classrooms all day long and in the building all day long in a very traditional school day. They had their PE period, they ate lunch. It was pretty much business as usual for sixth graders. Then around 1130, the buses would come back in 
the eighth graders would get on the buses, having done all their academics and their PE and their one special, and they would be bused home. The same buses would turn around and pick up the seventh graders. At about 12.30, the seventh graders would arrive in the building and they would start their school day. They would do a school day that was very similar to the eighth graders and it would go all the way till almost six o'clock. In the meantime, the sixth graders were out of the building at their regular dismissal time at 2.30 or three o'clock. So it was kind of a, a double using classrooms, sixth grade and seventh grade classrooms. But you also had staff. You had the staff having to have hours that started early in the morning if you were an eighth grade staff. Then you'd get your planning time and all your team meeting time at the end of your attendance time for your class level. And the opposite for the seventh graders. The seventh grade teachers would come in early and they'd do their planning time and their preparation time before the seventh graders arrived. Sixth grade teachers had a pretty normal school day. It was Obviously, a major change for staff members. And the staff members, I think, to their credit, did a wonderful job of, uh, you know, of accommodating us and making us, uh, you know, able to work this plan.